The day a cop's threats backfired spectacularly. I have worked quite a few part-time jobs over the years to help with the budget. Some in bigger cities, some in smaller ones. This story takes place in a large city where each neighborhood is actually a small town. The city is really a bunch of small towns that grew until they touched. This job was almost 20 years ago, so the dialogue is from memory. One part-time job was evenings, weekends at a liquor store, with a drive through beer slash soda slash wine lane. We could only sell beer and wine at the drive through If a customer wanted liquor, or more than a set amount of wine, he had to park and come inside. We could not carry liquor to the car for you either. The state had a lot of nitpicky rules like that. And I had just completed the mandatory training needed to sell alcohol, so the rules were fresh in my mind. The store had been in business for decades, and the manager was owner's slacker of a son. He was happy to bend or flat out break the laws regulating alcohol sales if it meant money for him. He didn't care if the consequences would be the problem of the person who rang them up. That didn't impact him directly, so it didn't matter. Manager had all sorts of special customers that were supposed to be treated a certain way that broke the regulations. I think the fine for selling liquor out of the drive-thru was more than the store earned in a year. I was a stickler for the rules, so if the manager wanted to break or bend the rules, he could do it. It wasn't like we got any reward for breaking the rules for manager's special customers. They had a hard time finding employees because manager had a reputation in the area and few people wanted to work for him. So refusing to bend over backward for manager's special customers was not going to get me fired. No one told me that we had an unusual customer several afternoons during the week and twice on the weekends. This customer was abominable. Rude, stinky, very prejudiced and sexist. He told the crudest jokes to the female employees and kept trying to insist that we go find a park with him like we were prostitutes. He wasn't just any cop, but the chief of police in a nearby section of the city. Most of the small cities within the larger city had their own police, fire, etc. The first night I saw him, Sisi, co-worker and manager's niece, great person, told me to just watch and stay quiet. She sold him two cases of beer and he went away. I noticed that his back seat area was filled to the point where you had no place to put your feet. She said to never say anything negative to him and to sell him whatever he wanted, no matter if he walked inside or not. She never gave me a clue as to why. A few weeks later, I was working alone on a Sunday at about noon. Business was always slow at this time. The chief pulls into the drive through Me. Hi, how are you today? What can I get for you? Chief. I'm fine, and so are you. I need a bunch of stuff, and it needs to go into the trunk. Me. Let me grab a pencil and pad so you don't need to repeat it. Just a second. I grab them. What all do you need? Chief. Lists various types of beer, wine, liquor, mixers, and some candy. Me. Is that all? Am I allowed to sell this to you through the drive through Or do you have to come in for the harder stuff? Chief got out of his car while it was sitting in the drive through lane. He walked up so close he loomed over me. Me. Is that all? Am I allowed to sell this to you through the drive through Or do you have to come in for the harder stuff? Chief. Do you think I would break the law? that I would ever embarrass myself, my city, or the Marines this way. What the Marines had to do with anything, I still have no idea, me. Of course I don't think that. I am just asking because the state training was unclear about this. I guess it must be fine. After all, you are an officer of the law. Just promise me that if I make a mistake, it will stay between you and me. The training was not unclear, but I felt unsafe around him and didn't want to argue with him or make him angry. Chief, it better be fine. Stop backing up. He was walking forward toward me, and he was very tall and imposing, not in a good way. I need to see if you are recording anything. Put your arms out from your body, level with your shoulders. Well, I see you are not wearing a wire or a bra. Maybe I should open your shirt a little and have some fun. I ought to take you back into that storeroom to have my fun with you. No one would ever know. Me, I am so sorry. I don't think father would approve. I am only here on Sundays at this time, because I can go to Mass earlier. If I was single, I would be happy about it. But it would mean breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Chief had a rosary hanging from his rearview mirror and Catholic decals on his official vehicle. It was a mostly Catholic area of the city, and this wasn't unusual. I was scared of him, and just saying anything to try to keep him away from me. I cannot tell you how imposing and awful this man was. 
I really thought he was going to take me back to the storeroom and assault me. Chief. Well, it might be worth it. Be quick about getting my order, and I will leave you alone this time. You should wear a bra that pushes you up when you know I am coming by. I nodded at him, and rushed to get what he wanted, and to ring him up. I just wanted him gone at that point. I felt very scared, but knew we needed the income. I had to figure out a way not to be near the guy again, and still keep my job. Cece came in to take over about two hours later. She could see that I was a mess, and she wanted to know what happened. We had no customers, so I told her. Chief came in and wanted a ton of stuff. Cases of beer, lots of wine and hard liquor, mixers, all of it. He insisted on getting it through the drive through I asked if that was okay because the training wasn't clear. He got out of his car and kept getting too close. Eventually, he told me to stop moving after he backed me up into the wall. He said he had to pat me down to see if I was wearing a wire. It sure felt more like feeling me up. I was in tears, and Cece was hugging me to help me calm down. She asked if that was all. Me. He said he should open my shirt for fun, that he should take me into the storeroom, and no one would ever know. Cece. This is why we give him what he wants, and we never question him. We don't want him to get out of the car because he tried this with everyone. He doesn't know we have cameras everywhere now. No sound, but cameras. I am not sure what we can do about it, but I will think on it. I didn't see Sissy for over a week, just how our schedules worked. I was really nervous when I was alone in the store. I didn't feel unsafe in the store until my experience with the chief of police. I started thinking about how to get rid of a chief of police. I did some research and found out that the cops in any other jurisdiction could pull him over and or arrest him. Our neighborhood was announcing the summer festival season with lots of signs about drunk driving. Summer is when every local Catholic church has a big festival with games and rides and things. It is the big fundraiser for the church. Of course, the church festival would not be the same without tons of beer, at least not in this area. I walked over to the police station one day. It wasn't far. I asked an officer if they would be interested in pulling over a police officer from another district if the officer was clearly drinking. The officer, good cop, wanted to know more, but would definitely be interested in the situation. Me. I work at the drive through and liquor store. I have a customer that I am afraid of, and who breaks a number of laws. He is high-ranking in a different part of the city, not our neighborhood. I do not have warrants or a criminal record. I am not accusing him to get out of trouble. Good cop. Let's go in here and get some coffee and talk this out. Me. A couple of nights a week at a certain time, and again during our slowest period on Saturdays and Sundays, a high-ranking cop drives through. He insists that he can buy as much of anything that he wants, and he doesn't have to come inside for any reason. The first time I was alone when he came through, I asked if he needed to come inside to get the liquor and amount of wine he wanted. I was not rude or mean. I even said that maybe I didn't understand the training and the loopholes in the laws. Good cop. Do you know that just being a cop doesn't mean the laws change for him? Me. Yes. But that isn't all he did. When I questioned him, he got out of the car and started backing me up against the wall. He put his hands all over me, supposedly to check for a wire. Then he said he should take me into the back room for so-called fun. I am really afraid he is going to sexually assault me. I can't think of a way to stop it, but to get him arrested for all the drunk driving he does. I won't make a complaint about the sexual assault. I cannot go through that. Good cop. What do you mean by all the drunk driving he does? Does he do it a lot? Me. He is always drinking when he drives through. Usually he has a beer in his hand when we get to him. I have seen him go through up to three beers if he has to wait for one or two other cars before we get to him. He never buys under a case of beer unless he buys whiskey with it. I named the whiskey he usually bought, but I can't remember it now. His backseat area is filled with empties every time we see him. The beer he buys is usually put on the front seat next to him. He opens a can before he leaves, saying he wants to make sure it is good. The only time he has us put all of the beer in the trunk or back seat is if he orders a Coke. Then he orders whiskey and pours some of the coke out to make room for the whiskey. Good cop. These are very serious allegations against someone you say is a high-ranking police officer. Are you sure you want to make them? You may be investigated if this goes to trial or disciplinary proceedings. Are you willing to go through that? Me. I am afraid that this man will rape me. I cannot go through that. I will testify about his drinking and driving. 
I won't say or do anything about the sexual assault threats. I just cannot go through that, so I need to stop it before it happens. Good cop. What are you afraid we will find if we investigate you? What secrets are you afraid of us finding? Me equal sign. I am a 30-something mother of three children. I don't have a wild life. I have been happily married for over a decade. I haven't ever been in legal trouble. I don't drink, do drugs, go to orgies, or do any of those types of things. I am not against social drinking, but I don't drink. I have some debt, but who doesn't? There isn't anything I can think of that you could dig up. Do what you have to. Good cop. How can you prove what he does? You are not in the car with him. How do you think we can pull him over and arrest him? Me. He has a routine. He pulls in, drinks whatever beer he has with him, orders what he wants, and often asks me to throw away his recently emptied cans. One, three, depending on how long the line is. Why he wants me to throw those cans away, I have no idea. His back seat is usually filled with empties. We give him whatever he orders, because we do not want him to get out of the car. I am not the only employee he has said awful things to. Once he pays, he turns right out of the parking lot. Then he turns left about a mile down. I know because I was headed the same way a few times. His car says he is from Summerview, and that it is the chief's car. It even has his name painted on it. I don't know how old the empties in his car are. I do know that I can set his beer cans aside if you need them for fingerprints or something. Good cop. He is the chief of Summerview? Wait here, I need to get our chief. Do not go anywhere. I was expecting them to have to get the top officers involved. I didn't expect the sort of excitement. About 30 minutes later, the chief of police of my neighborhood came in. I know who he is because he married some cousin of mine, but I have never had any real relationship with him. We said hi to each other and made the usual how is your family stuff for a moment or two. I had a lot of family in this area, way I too much some days. Chief of Police. I hear you have some information about Chief. Why are you coming to us with this? Me. He makes me feel very unsafe each time he comes through the drive through He also is drinking every time I see him come in and leaves with a drink in his hand. I have kids and family in this neighborhood. He is going to kill someone. He has been inappropriate with every female employee at the store. I feel threatened that if I don't sell whatever he wants, in whatever amounts, to him through the drive through then he will get out of the car and at least threaten to rape me. I want you to do something about his drunk driving so that he won't have a reason to come into our drive through several times a week. Chief of Police, if I look into you, am I going to find that you have a private relationship with him or other things that would discredit you? Me, of course not. I wouldn't go near the guy for any reason except I have to be polite at work. Also, I am married, happily. Chief of Police, from what you have said, this looks like an easy case of drunk driving. Especially if we can catch him with a lot of booze and empties on him. We would need to have someone in store for you to hand the empty cans to if we plan to use that as evidence. How comfortable would you be with an officer inside the store? Me. I would be fine with it as long as the officer was out of sight and out of uniform. If you are looking for empties, then Wednesday would be good. If you want to catch him in the car with a ton of alcohol, be there on sun about noon or sat about two, three. I went through security tapes to find out when he usually comes by. You would probably have to talk to manager after the fact to get those, or talk to C. She is the one who really runs things. Why are you all so excited over this? Chief of police. His behavior has caught the attention of quite a few people lately. I cannot go into it, but we are very interested in him. I also just don't like him. He hit on my wife at a function we had to attend. I left after writing and signing a statement. I didn't hear anything for several weeks and I was getting frustrated. Chief was still coming in, he was still drinking while driving, and he kept making awful comments to me. One Sunday about two months after I made my statement, Chief came in. He ordered even more than his usual Sunday amount. Less than a minute after he left our parking lot, I heard sirens, a lot of them. I hoped they were arresting Chief, but I didn't know for sure. The next morning when I took the kids to school, all the moms were buzzing. Apparently, Chief got himself pulled over for driving while intoxicated. They found his beer, wine, and hard liquor. They also found drugs. This led them to search his home, where they found unregistered guns and information about other illegal things he was involved with, corruption and even child porn to name just a couple of things. 
I spoke to the chief of police a week or two later. I would not need to testify. They had plenty of other people who were willing to testify. Chief had become a real liability for those who backed him in his town. Many of his close friends ended up testifying against him to save their own behinds. Chief went to prison. I am not sure where or how long. I just that it was an ugly situation. Chief's wife also left him. The news made a huge deal of the whole mess. I still am thankful that my name was kept out of it.